Throughout the Easter season, our Sunday morning Gospels present us with various images of God. Images intended to help us grow in our understanding about the nature of God. Who God is for us, with us, in and through us and one another. Last week we explored Jesus as the Good Shepherd. This morning, Jesus describes himself as the true woman. In 2011, after years of city living, my husband and I bought our first house in the suburbs. A few years later, we experienced an unusual cold snap late spring, and many of the plants in our front yard suffered. A Japanese maple tree I particularly adore was severely damaged. As spring continued, I fretted about how we were going to have to remove this beautiful tree. It was grace-filled and sat prominently in our front yard. I was so <coughs> sad. I felt like such a loss. I expressed my concern to my husband who said, I'll just prune it back. The core's healthy. I shrugged, disappointed, and somewhat skeptical. Half the tree looked completely dead. I'll prune it back, he said. It'll grow back, trust me. A week later, I came home, and as I pulled into the driveway, my jaw dropped in shock. Half the tree was missing. Steam began to rise from my brain. My former sadness turned to anger. I thought, what in the did this man do? The entire back half of the tree was gone. Just some lonely stump hanging out. Felt stupid. What in the world are we going to do with half a tree in the front yard? I marched inside the house, barely containing myself before the following exchange. So, what happened to the tree? I missed. Which one? <laughs> the one in the yard that's half missing. Oh, I pruned it. Uh, yeah, you think? Now we're back half of the tree's gone. It'll grow back. I could barely contain my eyeball, and I mourned to myself. That tree's never going back. Times of pruning can be tough. It's hard to trust amid the uncertainty of what we can see and that which we still cannot. There's a tension between what we can touch and feel and what is yet still beyond the grasp of our understanding or our imagination. And yet pruning is a vital component of growth, not just for the plants and the trees of God's creation, but for all God's people. There are times we all experience a pruning. Times when old ways of doing things or old ways of thinking about ourselves and our relationships come to an end, sometimes gently, other times abruptly. These are ways of thinking, manners of behaving that no longer serve us or those around us with whom we are in relationship. Pruning happens within us, individually within our relationships, within organizations, and within congregations. During a pruning, we may feel relief. Perhaps we may mourn, as I did for my Japanese maple, preferring to hold on to the whole tree, even if half of its branches were hindering its growth, rather than consider the possibility that a pruning could lead to new life for the tree as a whole. 
And it's important to emphasize here that pruning is not death. God, the vine grower, does not inflict death upon God's people, but prunes the living so that God's people may flourish in life abundantly. We need pruning. Otherwise, there would be no need for Jesus, the true one, the one in whom we have all been grafted as children of God. Does it create a certain level of stress? It may. Winemakers know that pruning creates stress on the branches of the vine. However, when managed, it provides better access to the light, creating new growth, new fruit, or more abundant fruit. And God desires God's people who are intertwined with one another through the true vine in whom we abide to flourish in the light of God's divine love. We abide in Jesus. Christ abides in us bearing fruit, life-giving fruit meant to be given away, consumed by others as spiritual nourishment. Therefore, pruning is necessary, not just to produce more, but to produce more for the nurturing of future Christian disciples. The year after my husband pruned our maple tree, I gazed at the stump hanging off the back and spied three small twigs sprouting green leaves. And I confess I was still skeptical. Those fledgling sprouts did not meet my expectations. And perhaps I didn't want to admit that my husband had been right. Perhaps I could have trusted him. After all, he did work in landscaping for several years. Had arborist experience and is pretty handy at finding just about any how-to video on YouTube far better than me. <coughs> this past week, I gazed admiringly a tree, and I could not have imagined it any differently. It was filled with many branches, flourishing with red leaves, fluttering in the wind, grace-filled. I couldn't believe that I had wanted to cling to its former self or uproot the tree entirely. There are many different branches of the one true vine, each with unique spiritual gifts for discipleship, each with unique spiritual gifts that bear fruit for God's people. Some are talented arborists, others are pastors, and still others possess many more gifts for the glory of God. Trusting in the grace of the true vine expressed in and through our communal life together, God's people have and will continue to always flourish abundantly. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.